Hello everyone, and welcome to Christmas 2.0, or I like to say, the start of the Stanley Cup playoffs, the best time of the year. It's going to be two weeks of blood, sweat, and tears, and some of the best hockey that you will ever see. There is nothing like the Stanley Cup playoffs for these two months that happen. I'm just a hermit, and it's amazing. I tell my friend, I'm like, I can't go out, I gotta watch the playoffs, unless of course I'm going to a bar to watch the playoffs. And uh, yeah, it's exciting stuff. Unfortunately, I have kind of a lot of things to do, so um, I don't know how much I'll be able to watch tonight. But you know what? Screw it. I'll watch tonight, and I'll I'll get a lot done tomorrow, and I can get I got a lot done today before the game. So Penguins and Blue Jackets start tonight, seven thirty Eastern. Uh, even though the Penguins don't have Chris Letang, I still predict them to win in six games. I just think that they're a better team. Columbus has not played well lately. I don't like their coach. Uh, Wabrowski does not have a good playoff record. Um, and Matt Murray does since he won the Cup last year. He's had an outstanding season. And the Penguins are finally getting healthy. Malkin's coming back. Amata just came back. It looks like even Hagelin might play in this series. Kunitz probably won't, but that's fine. They can get guys to replace him. But if Hagelin can get back, that's huge because the Penguins already have an advantage over Columbus with their speed, and he's the speediest guy on the team, and they can get him back and have even more speed, and it would be amazing. So that's that. Hainsey is also making his NHL playoff debut after like 900 regular season games, so good for him. That was the longest streak in the NHL. I don't quite understand why Stride is sitting, and uh, and Hainsey's, well, Hainsey, well, I mean not Hainsey, but you know why Doom and Madeline are playing. I mean, that I, Matt, Matt and Daly. Um, I personally would have would have played straight. I know you want to get Hainsey in a game, but I personally would have played straight in, maybe over him, because he's played really well in the power play, and he's been a really big help for the team. Not that Hainsey hasn't been bad, but I just think that straight's better, and he's got more offense. Um, and, I mean, that, that's a Penguins game. The Penguins game is they win with offense. Last year, also, they scored a lot, but they also were very good at locking down in playoffs, so I would... I, but they also did have Chris Letang. They don't have him this year. It's just huge. But they're going to really rely on Justin Schultz, who I thought would be paired with Brian Dumoulin. But Mike Sullivan's paired him back with Ian Cole, which is fine, I guess. I'm not quite sure I like Hainsey and Dumoulin as a top pair. They're not exactly the fleetest of foot, but I guess they'd be good at shutting down teams. Um, and uh, Matta and Daly also are not – well, Matt, Matta's not a great skater, but Daly's pretty fast. And then you have Schultz who can skate. So uh, I guess they kind of have a, a – a guy who can move the puck more is, you know, someone who can't, but, you know, it's not like Hainsey and Dumoulin are slow. They're just skating south their strong suit, but Dumoulin's been very solid this year, so I'm pretty confident in that. And, you know, the Penguins won last year with a, quote, no nim defense, so why not this year, right? I mean, repeating's going to be really tough, and I, I don't see them doing it, but you know what? Never say never, and they have as good of a chance as, uh, as any year, really. Um, they still have a very strong team. All the returning players from last year, I'd argue the forward depth is even better this year now that they have Scott Wilson healthy and Jake Gunsell's really come up and played well. Of course, the defense has really taken a hit without Chris Tang, but they still have that goalie depth too. They have the bat, best backer in the league with Marc Andre Fleury. You know, you won a cup with both your backup and your starter. Pretty good. And I'm sure Marc Andre Fleury is glad he's not in net because I'm sure he has nightmares about last time he played Columbus in the playoffs. Not so pretty. Not so pretty. So, playoffs start tonight. It's all very exciting. Um, yeah, so Malkin's coming back with Kessel and Rust is on the line, uh, which I think is kind of a nice little, a nice speed line. And Rust played with Malkin last year in the playoffs. So they have quite a bit of chemistry. And then you have Sid and the kids, which has been such an epic line. Good luck, Brandon Dubinsky, LOL, shutting down that line. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Pittsburgh has an outstanding home record and an outstanding road record. So no reason why they can't get off to a quick start in the series. Then you have uh, Benino with Wilson and who else is he with? There's Eve Benino with uh, Wilson, I believe, is on the line, who has been a nice surprise this season. He scores like one goal a month, but he's very solid and he's, he's reliable in his, own, in his own end. And then you have Kunakal and Cullen and Rowney. Rowney has been another one of these Wilkes Bear call ups who's really taken the bull by the horns and run with it, just like Sheary and Russ did last year. And Wilson did until he got hurt last year. You know, he's a bit of an older guy, but he's pretty fast and he's pretty smart. And they've played well together lately. Rust, um, Rowney, and Kunakal. 
And, you know, it's amazing that the Penguins have even played this well, considering, oh, and then and then the third line is Benino with Hornquist and Wilson, you know, and the Penguins finished second in the league. And it's amazing that they even played this well, considering how injured they were, because they were just decimated by injuries. Like, over 250 man games lost, top five in the league again. You know, the injury bug has struck them, and they still finished second in the league. They lost their starting goalie to injuries twice. They lost Sheary to injuries twice. The Crosby started with a concussion. Malkin finished the year out long-term with a shoulder injury. They've had Hagelin out for a while. Oli Maddox just came back after missing 25 games. Dealing is 20 games before him. Malkin missed 16 games. The Tang has only played half the season, and it's incredible what this team has been able to do. And I think that even though the Penguins lost the Tang, I think that that could become kind of a rallying point because last year they won the cup for Dupuis and then when Daly went down, they won the cup for Daly and this year maybe he went it for the Tang, you know, he's been a guy, he's a guy that's been through a lot. He's really had problems staying healthy and he's had some family problems as well. So if they could win it for him, that'd be, that'd be really cool, especially since he's one of those core guys along with Crosby and Malkin and Fleury, who've been there forever, and, you know, it's going to probably shrink just to, just to cross you mock and the tang next year as Fleury will be gone, and Kunitz should be gone. So, for this series, I have Penguins in six. Uh, I think the cannon's very annoying, but I think Columbus at home will have will have the jump of the fans and can get out to a nice start, but I um, I do think the Penguins finished off in six games. But, that being said, Columbus uh, has Bobrovsky, and because of the Bobrovsky factor, I think he's capable of stealing a game or two. Then uh, I have uh, my next series, Boston and Ottawa. I think Ottawa in five. Ottawa missed a golden opportunity to play the Leafs when the Leafs screwed that up, and that would have been a gimme series, you know, pick them. But Boston, Ottawa is really tough against Boston. Even though I love what Gibby Shea's done with the team, they played a lot better. You know, there's still a question of is Eric Carlson fully healthy? Um, they're not proven in the playoffs of a lot of young guys, whereas even though it's weird because I hated everything Boston did this offseason, I hated the way they let go called Julian, I hated the letting go called Julian, and I had nothing, no idea about Bruce Cassidy, but their luck is finally turning around. They're still the best possession team under Bruce Cassidy, and that top line has just been lethal. I don't like their defense, but Ottawa doesn't have great defense either, and to Garask, man, he knows how to get it done. He's won a cup, even though he wasn't the starter that year. He still won a cup. He knows what it's like to win in the playoffs. And they they are missing Tori Krug and Brendan Carlo, which are huge injuries. But I still would take them in a series over Ottawa. So I'm taking that in five games. I don't think it'll be close. And then Montreal and Rangers. Oh boy, Chris Kreider. Back to the scene of the crime for Care Price and Chris Kreider. Uh, as we know, this is what got Care Price knocked out three years ago. And Dustin Dukarski had to come in and play very well. But uh, who knows if they would have had... Carey Price, maybe they could have gone to the cup final. Uh, this one, I do think it's going to be Montreal. I just, uh, I don't, I, I haven't liked the Rangers the past couple of years. They're not that fast. Uh, Montreal's a, a faster team now than they, than they were. I mean, they're also more physical, which is weird. And they have Carey Price. Basically, it's the Carey Price factor. Now that they have Claude Julian, though, they're playing a lot better. More to their capabilities. And Lundqvist has just not been Lundqvist this season. He's not been himself. Um, I don't like their, their speed on defense is slow. Uh, not the Montreal is fast, but they do have some, some smaller guys who can take advantage. And yeah, to me, it just comes down to goaltending. Any carry price is carry price, and Lundqvist is not Lundqvist anymore. And that's really what it comes down to for me. So unfortunately, it's unfortunate the Rangers couldn't get it done with Lundqvist because I think their window's definitely closed down now that Lundqvist is a little older. But it's amazing he was able to be this good for this long. He just had an average year. Which an average year for him is still like pretty good for everyone else, but that's how good he is. And then my final season in the e my final series in the East is Washington and Toronto. To me, this is the biggest mismatch on paper and on the ice. Uh, the Leafs are already in tough, but now Frederick Anderson might not be fully healthy, even though he's ready to go in Game One. He did take that hit to the head by Tom Sestito. I don't know if he's fully ready. He's already had a couple head injuries this season. And Nikita Zaitsev is not playing for game one. And that's a huge loss for the Leafs because their defense is already pretty bad, pretty stinking bad. And not having Nikita Zaitsev, who's one of those nine rookies and is a good puck moving defenseman, means you have to play Morgan Riley with Roman Polak and Jake Gardner with Matt Hunwick. And, oof, that's, that's not good because I, I, I not that I like Hunwick and Polak together, but... Having to play one of those star guys with a bad player is not good. I mean, hopefully they prop them up, but 
yeah, I don't, I don't like that. And then you have to put Martin Wrench in, in the playoffs, who's never, who hasn't played a game in like a month, and throw him into the Wolves against the league's best team. So good luck with that. And then you have Alexei Marchenko, who's also not played. So the Leafs are going to be in tough. Um, even if, even if Anderson and I ever fully healthy, I still would have would have picked Washington to win in four, and I'm sticking by that. I think it's going to be sweet. The Leafs don't have a chance in hell. Uh, but it'll be a good learning experience, kind of like when the Penguins got decimated by Ottawa in 2007 and they went to the cup final next year. In the West, Edmonton and Anaheim. I'm seeing a lot of people are Edmonton and San Jose. I'm seeing a lot of people pick Edmonton for the series. Uh, no, I don't buy it. To me, Edmonton's just the Conor McDavid show. I don't like their defense, and Cam Talbot's been very good, but to me it's the Conor McDavid and the T Cam Talbot show. And I just don't think they have the depth to get past San Jose, an experienced playoff team, even though they're not fully healthy, you know that Joe Thornton's going to bring this all. And uh, Martin Jones has playoff experience, whereas Cam Talbot does not, although I do think Cam Talbot is a better goalie, probably. I'm, I picked uh, I picked San Jose in six for that one. Anaheim and Calgary. Calgary's not won in Anaheim since then forever. Uh, and Anaheim, again, is a heavy team. It's a playoff team. They don't have to do well in the playoffs. It's weird because I don't like Randy Carlisle, and he's their coach. And... All their numbers are bad, all their underlying numbers, but they still win because they have Corey Perry. They've run against them. They've guys who know, know how to win in the playoffs. John Gibson's played very well, and they're a heavy team. They're you know they're kind of in the mold of LA. They won the cup a couple, couple times, and they, they know how to get done. Also, they have incredible defense, even with Ken Fowler, who's going to be out. They have Shea Theodore, who they can plug in there. And while I do like Calgary, I just don't think they have the depth to keep up with them. I also don't like their goaltending. Uh, Brian Alley in the playoffs, not good. So that one, I also said, I think I said six games for that one, but maybe I should have picked five. And then the last, and then I have Minnesota and St. Louis. At this one, I had one in the distance. I think that they're two pretty evenly, evenly matched teams. I don't like the goaltending, really, of either team. Dubnik's not play well lately. I think it's going to be kind of a, a barn burner series, and I got a I don't really completely trust Jake Allen, but they both have good defense. They're both very well coached, and they both have depth. Minnesota's had an incredible season, and Bruce Boudreaux, you know, for all of his faults, uh, he's a hell of a coach. And even though he's not had playoff success, he's been in the playoffs a lot, much more so than Mike Yo has. Well, Mike Yo has with Minnesota, but not as far. So for that one, I picked Minnesota in seven. Then we have Chicago and Nashville playing each other again. And again, I have this one going the distance just because I really like Nashville this year. I really liked what they did with their team. Rene's had a good season. I think Rene can steal a couple games. Johansson's played well. Then you have Phil Forsberg, who's sick. Nashville defense is really good. Chicago, just when I thought they were going to be bad, they've stepped it up. Joel Quenville is keeping it going with this team that we thought would be older and not as good. The young guys have stepped up, but he's an incredible coach. And I definitely think that this is going to be kind of like a coaching chess match. And while they're both good coaches, I am picking Chicago in that one just because, again, they know how to win. But I think it's going to be seven games. So it's going to be close. So those are all my picks. Uh, let me know what you think. The Penguins game starts tonight in a, just over an hour. Should be an insane game. We know this is a crazy rivalry that's just developed over the past couple of years. It's gone intense. It's only going to get even more intense. Um, and uh, we know the coaches are friends. Well, they were friends not so much anymore. I look forward to seeing what you guys think. What, what matchups are you most looking forward to? Uh, who do you think is going to win? Let me know your picks below. Are you doing a bracket? Please like it. If you like, subscribe if you really like it. Share with all your friends. Tell everyone, and I'll see you after game one tomorrow night. Game one tonight, I'll see you tomorrow night. All right, let's go Penguins.